Alrighty, what's up YouTube? This is NecroSteever and we're going to do a little team building video for the April 2014 Friendly. Now registration for the April Friendly is uh, going to be on, starts on April the 17th and uh, it will go until all the slots are filled. And it's split up by age group, so for my younger viewers there, if you're in the lower age bracket there, feel free to go ahead and register anyway. You just need to make sure you have a Pokemon Global Link account and I'll leave uh, links to those in the description. Now what you all need to know about the April Friendly is that it only allows Pokemon that are uh, catchable in the Kalos decks, which means only Pokemon that have that little blue hexagon on their screen, you have to breed them and get them in the Kalos region. Uh, of course that does include Mewtwo, Xerneas, Eviltal, and Zygarde. So make sure you're aware of that we're going to, in this video, I'm going to be looking at what I think are kind of the threats for the April Friendly and um, besides just me wanting to have fun with it, the Pokemon that I want to make sure that I'm able to counter. Uh, so please be aware of those rules there. Of course, the other rules apply such as item clause where you can't have more than the same item, species clause where you can't um, have more than one of the same Pokemon, and uh, of course it is a Friendly so we're going to be doing you have six Pokemon and you choose three to battle against your opponent in a singles match. So uh, you'll get to see your opponent's Pokemon in the team preview and then you each pick three. So a very interesting style of battle here. Um, for those of you interested in entering the Striaton Radio Challenge, it's going to be using a similar format so it'll be a good way to get some practice for the Striaton Radio uh, uh, tournament as well. So why not use some Pokemon that we can have some fun with and I actually have a list of Pokemon that I consider really big threats when looking at everything in the Kalos decks and what I expect people to see. Now the main thing you can expect everyone to gravitate towards is going to be Mewtwo. Of course Mewtwo, uh, even without his Mega Evolutions, is quite a force to be reckoned with. With 130 base speed, uh, that is something that you can't really sleep on. Um, I believe that we're going to see a lot more of either Mewtwo with Life Orb or Mewtwo Y just because of how enamored people are with that speed. Uh, I myself, I for this team I've decided to limit myself to two legendary Pokemon even though I could use Mewtwo, Eviltal, Xerneas, and Zagarde, but I've decided to limit myself to two just to have a little bit of fun with it. So, And I've decided that Mewtwo X is who I am going to kind of use just, to, just for a little bit of fun. Uh, Mewtwo X, of course, the perks that Mewtwo has over Mewtwo Y or regular Mewtwo, being a psychic fighting type means he's not weak to Sucker Punch, which is huge just because of how popular Sucker Punch is going to be. Uh, on my list, of course, we can see Sucker Punch coming from things like Bisharp and Honchkrow, both very powerful Pokemon that can use Sucker Punch, and Mewtwo being neutrally resistant to those and having a higher defense stat than both Mewtwo Y and Mewtwo, uh, it can definitely take those hits quite a bit better. Uh, also Mewtwo X still has 130 base speed so he's able to boast the same speed stat and he still has a very very good um, base uh, special attack here we can see base 154 which is amazing that allows him to use side strike I'm actually uh, going to run a mix set uh, let's see so let's if we just look at our our things on this list here that we need to counter what on here forces out something like a Mewtwo X. Now Mewtwo X being psychic and flying, uh, that means he's going to be weak. Of course to Talonflame, it doesn't matter how fast Mewtwo X is, he's outsped by that priority Brave Bird there, so that's something to keep in mind of course. Uh, so we'll need a teammate to handle Talonflame. And then of course something like uh, Gengar, uh, you don't want to switch an end to anything like that. Anything like Bisharp or Honchkrow can be handled relatively well by Mewtwo's great um, coverage options there. And I really want to run Mix just because with this massive attack stat right here, uh, base 190, he can really put the hurt on something even without investment. Now I actually managed to go into my game and catch uh, Naive Mewtwo, which is plus speed minus special defense, and um, I gave it just enough speed to outspeed Darkrai. Uh, which means I need to get right over 383 speed. And then I put the rest into special attack and into uh, attack. Now the main things I needed um, Mewtwo to KO, of course, um, are going to be, he needs to be able to dish out some really, really strong neutral hits. And of course he uh, 
he needs to be able to check a few other things as well, like a few random things like Aegis Slash and things like that, so that's why I decided to go mixed. Now on my Me 2 X, uh, actually I believe I decided to give it just a little bit of special attack and then I put the, no I'm sorry, I gave it a little bit of attack and then I put the rest into special attack uh, just to kind of balance things out a good bit there. So he's going to have a very high special attack stat. I don't think that my Mega Me 2 actually has a max special attack IV. I believe it has max HP, attack, special defense, and speed are my maxed IVs. So I'm going to lower this one a little bit just to compensate for that. Uh, so that's the spread we have right there. Now, of course, it is Mega Me 2 X, so we have to do the Mew tonight here. Mew tonight X and we definitely want to have it with Earthquake just to hit things like Aegis Slash of course that's also going to help it handle a few of the other grounded Pokemon on this list most notably Blaziken's hit super effective by that if it tries to switch in or of course a Psychic Attack will be nice later or Psy Strike um, it also hits Tyranitar quite nicely if we don't want to try to use Aura Sphere uh, I don't want to run Brick Break just because it's so underpowered um, I, I don't know, I just don't like using it really. And, uh, although it would be nice to break some screens, so that may be worth considering. And also, of course, Earthquake is going to hit things, um, it just has great neutral coverage. Of course, it only, you know, you're, it's only dodging flying dice, that's why people run Quake Ed so much. And I'm actually going to use Rock Slide on my, on my Mewtwo X, just because he's so fast, it's going, number one, I miss Stone Edge, like it's my job. Uh, which I'm sure you guys all have experience with that. But number two, just that he's so fast that he's going to have access to that flinch chance, which will be nice to turn things in our favor, and of course it's a little bit more accurate. Fortunately, Rock Slide still co scores KOs on, uh, I mean, it, with the EV spread that I gave it, I can KO something like a ho -Oh with Rock Slide. So if I can KO that super effective times four, I'm feeling pretty, uh, and ho -Oh is definitely no slouch on the defensive side, I feel pretty good about using that. Now my special attacks are going to be Psy Strike, which means Mewtwo will have some utility even if it gets burned. Um, interestingly, uh, an uninvested Psy Strike is like 2% weaker. It's barely weaker than an invested Psycho Cut, uh, which is just odd, because that's the difference between the base powers of the moves, of course. Interesting math there. Um, and I'm not really sure what to run in this last slot here. I'm really tempted to run Aura Sphere, because number one, that's Stab. And Aura Sphere is going to allow us to hit a lot of Pokemon on this list. Everything from Lucario to Kangaskhan to Greninja. It hits Caesar neutrally. Scarf Diggersby does not like it. Um, and I don't think Scarf Diggersby outspeeds Mega Mewtwo at max speed either. Uh, of course, Weavile and Mamoswine don't like it. Mewtwo laughs with that Ice Shard. So Aura Sphere definitely seems nice. We could also run Ice Beam. I don't see Ice Beam being as useful in this tournament just because there aren't as many dragons running around. The only dragons that I really anticipate being used are Dragonite and Garchomp, which I don't think I have Garchomp on this list. Let me add him real quick so I don't forget about him again. Uh, Dragonite, Garchomp, and uh, Kingdra, of course, because with only 3v3, 5 turns of rain is much more useful. So I'm going to forego Ice Beam for this tournament. Hopefully I don't end up regretting that. And we are going to go with Aura Sphere on Mewtwo X. So, uh, I just gotta get him. If you guys decide to use Mewtwo, be sure that you raise him to level 100. Um, he does not learn Psy Strike until level 100, so definitely get on that, because you have to put your Pokemon in the battle box and lock him in for the tournament. So if you don't get him there before you lock it in and register, then you will be at a loss afterwards. Uh, feel free to invest more speed in Mewtwo if you want to outrun, um, uh, base... Uh, 123 Pokemon, if you want to outrun things like, um, I don't know, Greninja, uh, you, unless you're using, if you're using Mewtwo Y or regular Mewtwo, then you can outrun Talonflame, uh, which will probably just use Brave Bird anyway, so you won't really outrun it, but you'll be faster, you know, for what it's worth. Uh, other than that, definitely consider using Mewtwo Y, I just really like Mewtwo X just because it can stay in on, um, Evil Tall. Take a Sucker Punch and then KO it with Rock Slide, which is really nice. A lot of people don't realize that Evil Tall's physical attack is the same as its uh, special attack. So it can use Sucker Punch quite well, and being able to heal with Oblivion Wing is quite annoying.
Also, Mewtwo X does not get KO'd by a Sucker Punch, uh, basically uh, the Parental Bond Sucker Punch from a Max Attack Kangaskhan, which allows me to KO it in response with uh, the Aura Sphere. So, that's just something Mewtwo X has. Now, the second Legendary that I decided to go with is actually going to be Zagard. Um, Zagard is just one of my favorite Pokemon from the Kalos region. Uh, he, I feel like he kind of gets um, overshadowed by the other legendary Pokemon in the region. And funny story, I actually found Zagard randomly. I was just exploring, and this is the best part of playing Pokemon blind and not looking up things on the internet. I was just exploring, and I happened to come upon it, and I was like, what the heck is this thing? And so I saved before I walked any closer because I didn't know if there was going to be a scene. And I walked up, and we had an awesome battle because I didn't even have a Master Ball. I caught him in a Luxury Ball. I think he has a really high catch rate, though. But still, it was awesome. And I caught him, and he was adamant, and he had max attack speed and HP, and his IVs, just perfect. I named him Rebellion after a sword that you all might be familiar with. Now, Zagard has some really interesting tools. Of course, his ability Aura Break reverses other auras on the field. That specifically refers to Evil Tall having um, Dark Aura, which powers up his Dark Moves by 30%, so a lower Dark Moves by 30%, and Xerneas having um, fair, uh, the Fairy Aura, which raises Fairy Moves by 30%, it would lower those too. Now that is not as useful against um, Xerneas. Xerneas is most likely going to be running Power Herb and Geomancy, maybe a Scarf Set here or there. Of course, Xerneas and Evil Tall, I believe, both have... Um, I believe they both have base 99 speed. Yeah. Base 99 and Evil Tall. Yes, they both have base 99 speed. We can see that attack, a special attack on Evil Tall there as well. Uh, so be aware of that. That means they are outrun by base 100s. Um, but that also allows them. So that means, you know, a Garchomp could outrun them. Uh, Gardevoir, Mega Gardevoir will actually speed tie, which is really, really nice. And Scarf Diggersby will outrun them as well. So that that's pretty interesting there. Definitely keep those things in mind with Evil Tall and Xerneas, because so they will be very popular. Now, Zagard, I will actually be using a Coil set, because I just have already trained mine. Um, so mine it has a lot of uh, HP, and a lot of attack, and a lot of defense. Uh, but mine utilizes the Coil alongside Earthquake. And, um, Outrage. And then, of course, we have Extreme Speed to round out the set. Extreme Speed is really, really useful, uh, just because, um, you get to outrun all these priority moves. Of course, you have the Sucker Punch coming from Evil Tall and Kangaskhan. You have, uh, Lucario using Bullet Punch. You can also use Extreme Speed, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, you have, of course, Talonflame using, uh, Extreme Priority Braver, which is extremely important to outrun. You have Greninja using uh, Water Shuriken. You have Aegis Slash using Shadow Sneak. A Dragonite can also use Extreme Speed. Caesar with the Bullet Punch. Um, Diggersby with Quick Attack. You have the Swag play shenanigans coming from Klefki and Miaskic with Priority Thunder Wave and Swagger. It just, Extreme Speed is extremely important to bring to a tournament like this, because that way when you see your opponent with Priority moves in their team, you know that you can at least have something to outrun that. Now on the downside there, uh, Zigarde before it gets set up, kind of has mediocre attack. This is, I'd say, slightly above average attack, but pretty mediocre for a legendary. Uh, this defense stat and that HP are fantastic, though, and that's really where he's going to be able to shine. Uh, so don't expect Extreme Speed to be doing amazing damage before you set up. Uh, I believe it only does about 30% with a Life Orb um, to something like uh, Talonflame, so uh, just just don't expect it to be blowing everything out of the water until you set up there. But it is a fantastic revenge killer, and it's very easy to set up with Zagard because of its typing. Uh, you can switch it in on some electric type moves, most na uh, most notably, you're switching in on predicted thunder waves and things like that. And uh, also, if you have flying type Pokemon on your team, Zagard can come in easily on those rock type moves that are very very common. So. That's that's kind of why I'm thinking about Zagard. Now I was um, between Mega Mewtwo and Zagard. Uh, I I still have a weakness to Kangaskhan, and this is the biggest thing that I have a problem with. And this is why Kangaskhan was banned. Of course, for those of you who don't know, I'm going to pull up Kangaskhan's stats here. Um, Kangaskhan has 
really, really high attack. Uh, well, not really high, but after you take into account Parental Bond, which does an additional attack uh, for 50% of the original damage, um, that basically gives it uh, a base attack stat of... Yeah, 187. So there we go. That's a massive attack. Um, fortunately, we don't have to worry about Megas Kingish not having access to move tutors. It has to be bred in the Kalos region, so no seismic toss. But Sucker Punch, Return, Power Up Punch, it's going to be very difficult to stop. Um, so the, the best way to check that, really, is just to not let it get set up without making it pay for it. Um, you could run a Ghost Type, I guess. Uh, ghost Types... That's going to be Gengar, or maybe Gorgeist is nice, because it can burn it. Um, Trevenant can also do that, although it takes hits, physical hits a little worse than uh, Gorgeist does, especially the supersized one. And then, of course, you could also use Steel types to resist the moves outright, but Kangashkan does have access to Hammer Arm, which it learns via level up. So, uh, of course, Power Up Punch. So I think that I'm just going to counter this the same way that I did in... OU when it was allowed, and that is just to bring Ferrothorn. <laughs> if you're going to hit me, I will make you regret it at the very least. Uh, now let's see. Rocky Helmet is what I'm going to use on this Ferrothorn just because uh, so many, especially a lot of priority moves Ferrothorn can switch into. Right now, it pairs nicely with Zagard being weak to fire, um, and it also pairs with Mega Mewtwo being weak to fighting. These two can switch in on predicted moves coming at Ferrothorn, and the type of Pokemon on this list who might be using fire-type moves, such as Blaziken, uh, such as the Charizard Y. They Charizard Y is uh, he's not going to really like taking in extreme speed. He's a little bit more frail on the physical side. Um, Mega Mewtwo can, of course, outspeed Charizard Y. Uh, although I wouldn't switch it into it, of course. Um, if it's Bandit and Talonflame is using Flare Bliss, the guard can come in and set up on that, basically. So that's pretty good. I think that there's some decent team synergy right there. What I don't like is Ferrothorn's um, kind of lack of offensive potential. Uh kind of like what I said was the guard, 194 attack, it's kind of, it's above average, but it's it's kind of underwhelming when you're trying to choose between three Pokemon to bring, and so I think I'm really going to focus on um, the defensive side of things here, and just make him relaxed, and just say, take those physical hits, this will allow me to switch into a lot of priority, um, all, all, all the priority except for Water Shuriken, and Shadow Sneak, no, no shadow sneak makes contact. All the other priority makes contact. And when you're using Rocky Helmet and you're using um, Iron Barbs, that means you lose about a third of your HP. Uh, no, you lose about a sixth of your HP just for touching Ferrothorn. And why that's important, why that's important against Mega Kangaskhan is because Kangaskhan hits twice. And now you're losing a third of your HP just for attacking. So... Um, that can put Kangaskhan in a much easier position to check with priority coming from Zigard uh, or any other Pokemon. So, I, I really like that. Now, as far as EVs go, I'm just going to split things kind of evenly between defense and special defense. Um, I think that it needs to be able to take... Uh, it needs to be able to take... Uh, it should be able to take a hammer arm from uh, Mega King of Shana. It needs to be able to take one, because then that way it can hit it back with a Power Whip, or at the very least, it can Leap Seed it and protect and stall a little bit. So this set, the default set here is for max defense. I don't think that that's really necessary. I'm going to give King of Shana here. Here he has Sucker Punch, Power Punch, Return, and Earthquake. That's what they're saying in the standard set. I do think that this is what you will see most of the time. I have seen Kangaskhan run Hammer Arm. I've seen them run Facade because they are very prone to getting burned. Uh, I, I don't necessarily know the, the utility of that. I've also seen them running Substitute. So, uh, And of course, if you attack Ferrothorn, even if you're behind a Substitute, you're still going to pay for it. We run Relaxed, of course, to power up the Gyro Ball attack just to lower our speed. And we have... I'm going to put... I'm just going to see how much Hammer Arm does. 
just so you guys can kind of see the analysis that I do when I'm looking at my teams here. Now, Hammer Arm does 59.6 to 70 percent damage, uh, and that's with a max defensive investment. So either way, he's going to 2 KO us. That's just that's what will happen no matter what, and it takes into account the parental bond type attack, type attack. Excuse me. So let us take away some of this until let's see that's a guarantee to a KO all we need is for Pharaoh Thorn to live it really because if I can live it he takes a third of his HP and recoil then we can leech seed him and protect or something like that that would be really really nice so um, no matter what it's a guarantee to a KO so a good a good point to hit there, right there will have about 80% left at max HP. That's pretty good, because you can invest the rest into special defense. Um, of course, you get 510 EVs total. I put 252 into HP, and then right now I have 72 in defense, which leaves me 186 to put into special defense. And that should actually balance out quite nicely with 347 in defense, 314 in special defense. I might play with those numbers a little bit more later. I don't want to bog you guys down with numbers because that's not what the analysis is about really. But let's let's definitely um I I don't know. I I like that for right now at the very very least. So we're gonna go that and that and I actually bred a really good feral thorn so I'm feeling pretty good about that. And definitely want to have gyro ball because that's going to help a lot against Xerneas and Gardevoir. Of course they're both capable of running hidden power fire but if they're running Hidden Power Fire, there's not much you can do against that anyway. Uh, of course, if Xerneas is running the Geomancy set, it's unlikely that that set is running Hidden Power Fire. So he will double his speed and probably get one hit KO'd by a Gyro Ball. So that'll be really, really nice to get that damage in. Power Whip is also pretty standard. That'll be really nice for Rotom Wash, who should definitely be on this list, and I forgot to include him. Um, definitely carry a Grass type, if only for Rotom Wash. Uh, that thing is going to be very, very prevalent. Of course, you guys see it a lot in OU. I like Rotom Wash, but since he's so popular, I don't use him that much. Um, I just prefer Rotom Heat right now. And, of course, my favorite Rotom form is Leaf Rotom. And I actually thought about him for a second there, but we really need the steel typing to go between um, some, some good team synergy there. And I'm going to put Protect. Oops. It would help if I could spell it correctly. And leap seed up eat seed. No, no, we don't want eat seed. And that'll allow us to stall if we need to, or if we need just a couple of times to, to stall out any weather or anything like that. Feral Thorn is also a nice utility counter to rain teams, which might be prevalent. I'm um, handle sand teams okay. Uh, if I see Charizard, I'm not going to bring Feral Thorn to the match, of course, um, because then I can just handle it with those two. So. Now, speaking of uh, Charizard, there are a few things left that we need to make sure we counter, and that's going to be, namely, Talonflame, Charizard Y, and probably Blaziken. And the one thing that they all have in common is that they're all fire types. They all have access to relatively high speed and or priority. Of course, Blaziken has speed boost as an ability. It raises speed by one stage every turn. That's not as important in a 3v3 match. Those matches are over pretty quickly. But what is important is that he can baton pass that to a teammate, which can be pretty annoying. Um, especially if you're trying to hit it with, say, a water attack, and then he baton passes it to I don't I don't know, some grass type, whether it be a Rotom cut or uh, hit, or maybe a water type, who knows. Um, and then they resist your water move, so that can be annoying. Uh, Charizard Y, of course, just with the, that really high special attack, cannot be played around with, and that likes to run Solar Beam, and it's single, so we'll probably see more Overheat and Flamethrower and Fire Blast than we will see Heat Wave. Uh, and of course, Dragon Pulse and Solar Beam and Hidden Power fighting are, well, not fighting, rather, uh, but, um, but ground, excuse me, for things like Heatran, even though Heatran's not in this tournament, but Hidden Power Ground is still pretty popular. That's what we'll see on Charizard Y. Uh, so I I really like the idea of running Azumarill. Um, Azumarill, of course, has that new fairy type. I mean, you guys all know about Azumarill, that bunny blast. You guys have seen my Azumarill. Uh, so we'll definitely want to run huge power. And I'm still worried about uh, just priority attacks. Between Swag Play and Burn, It I'm, I'm just tempted to run Lumberry 
Although, I really could just run Choice Ban. Although, I'd rather run Choice Ban on something else if I'm going to run it on it. Because everyone assumes Azumarill is going to be banded. So, it's, it's fun to surprise them with that. Splash Play and Mystic Water, of course, both um, raise water type moves by 20%, which is nice. You... The, the thing about being banded is that you either... You, there are some KOs that you hit, otherwise you're just kind of missing out, so... Hmm. I think I'm going to go with the Lumberry for now. I may come back to that. But Azumarill is very prone to getting burned and or paralyzed. So we're going to go with Lumberry for now. And I'm just going to give him the standard... Uh, the standard Bandit set, which is going to be Play Rough, Waterfall... Uh, Aqua Jet, of course, for our priority. Wow. Waterfall. Don't go chasing waterfalls. And in the final slot, I'm going to give him Superpower. I think. Wait. Superpower? Do I need that? Let's see. What is Superpower hitting on this list that I'm not hitting? Because, see, Play Rough and Waterfall hit... Let's see, Mewtwo is hit neutrally by those two. Super effective here. Kangaskhan would be hit super effectively by a super power. Um, let's see, I can hit him with Play Rough for Waterfall, Play Rough for Waterfall, Waterfall, Play Rough, water, Play Rough. Got it, uh, got it, mm, got it, got it, got it. Rotom, that could be annoying. We might want to run Return to hit Rotom. I don't. I feel like Azumarill kind of loses in the in a matchup against Rotom anyway, so I don't know that that situation matters. A uh, Caesar get water attack, water attack, water attack, or fighting water. Charizard Y, Charizard X. Yeah, I'm not really seeing the usefulness of superpower here. So that's whenever you guys are kind of in the the situation where you're trying to figure out, okay, what's the last move that I'm going to put on this slot. Um, it's sometimes just helpful just to pop over to Cerebi or whatever, um, whatever site you guys use, Bulbapedia, or any other one, and just check out their, their moveset. Now, I know, oh, Double Edge might be worth considering there. Too bad he doesn't have a higher special attack. No, we don't need Dig, we don't need Brick Break. No, no, no. None of these are very useful. Um, hmm. You know, I might just leave it how it is for now. I, I might put Double Edge in that slot, just in case, but I... he, The situations where Azumarill is going to be using that fourth move are so few and far in between that it doesn't really matter, in my opinion. So yeah, for, for right now, we're going to say uh, Double Edge, is what we're going to say. Because I just don't see the utility of Superpower, and there's no reason in to really lower your physical attack when that's kind of what you do. So my Azumarill has max attack and max HP, and then I put 4 in speed to catch the speed creep on other Azumarill, and of course an Adamant Nature to raise that attack even more. Now let's see, a lot of, uh, one thing that I really like to do in a lot of my teams is run a Grass, Water, Fire core. Uh, that core allows you just defensively to switch around a good bit. Um, Ferrothorn and Azumarill are both relatively bulky, Azumarill just has a really nice HP stat allowing it to hit 404 HP. Its defenses are kind of mediocre, but with that high of HP, it can do it. And Ferrothorn is just very nicely well-wounded and very bulky, so... Um, I don't really have any speed demons beside Mega Mewtwo X so far. So, what else do we need to hit here? We, we have taken care of a few Pokemon on this list. I feel like Dragonite is taken care of. Um, so is Tyranitar. Don't really care about your Dragon Dance. Um, hmm. You know, running my own Scarf Ditto is probably a good idea. I have to think about that. Hmm. Something like Lucario is... I could hit it with the water, the Aqua Jet, rather, but that's not going to do much. It extreme speed's resisted. And it has its own extreme speed. Hmm. Bullet Punch is resisted by two, and it's not going to do much either of those two. You know... Fire types in the Kalos decks. Who is notice, notable there? Of course, we have Talonflame, which I'm very tempted to run. I haven't used Talonflame in a while just because he was so popular. Once again, I, it just I didn't think my Talonflame could shine because there were Talonflames everywhere. 
I don't mean shine like burst into flames. I mean shine as in, yeah, let's do some more talent flame. So, um, hmm. I, I really might just run my own talent flame. Because I don't really. I already have my Mega Pokemon. So I'm not that interested in running Mega Charizard, Mega Venusaur, because I already have a grass type. Uh, I don't really care about running Megas on any of these guys. Mega Blaziken. Let's take a look at Blaziken's stats, just because I know he was banned a while ago, so you guys may not remember him. Uh, of course, he still has speed boost as an ability. His attack power goes up immensely, 160, which is pretty impressive. That means maxed attack invested is 419. That's, that's not even with the plus nature. That's ridiculous. So, that is not to be trifled with. And of course, with 130 special attack, he can easily run... Um, Fire Blast or Focus Blast or any other special move. So that's. I think the number one check to this thing is just Talon Flame. Because no matter what he does, doesn't matter how fast he gets, he doesn't have any priority to deal with Talon Flame. Um, Azumarill can be a check as well. Not a counter, of course, because you can't switch it in on him. Because um, they just take so much damage from Mega Blaziken's attacks. But that Aqua Jet would hit relatively hard. It probably could take him down from 40%, uh, 50% HP. Not much higher than that, though, because Blaziken is actually, as you can see here, almost, I think he's, he just has a little bit less HP than Azumarill. Otherwise, he's just as bulky. Yep, defenses are 80, so that's a little bit weird to consider there. Um, and I really, yeah, I think I'm just going to run Talonflame. I just bred a perfect Talonflame, so now is a great time to use one. That'll give me access to more priority, which is really, really useful. Of course, you want to use Gale Wings. Don't forget and breed one with Flame Body, unless it's a defensive one, maybe. Uh, Gale Wings, of course, gives your priority to your Flying-type moves. And here is where I'm going to use that Choice Band, because Choice Band at Talonflame is such a great cleaner. Now, let's see. Brave Bird. Uh, Flare Blitz, of course. And actually, while I think in my last battle video I said that I don't like seeing Talonflame early game, Talonflame early game in 3v3 could be devastating. Uh, because the only things that... real Nothing really likes to switch in on Talonflame here, except for maybe if you predict correctly, you could switch in a Zapdos on the Brave Bird. You could also switch in Rotom Wash on just about any move, unless it's carrying the, the very rare natural gift with the... Um, I think it's the Tanga Berry, whichever one does the super effective grass type move. Uh, and that's just, it's typically just not worth giving up a move slot for to hit Rotom Wash. So, I think I'm just going to run U turn and Will O Wisp, just like I use in singles. Now, the reason you use Will O Wisp is if you know that your opponent's last Pokemon um, is, I don't know, Tyranitar, and you don't really have anything left to hit it. Instead of just trying, you turn out would actually hit pretty hard, but you're not going to KO it. So outright neutering it could be more useful. Um, things like Aegislash, Slash, which will sit in there, and King Shield against you, burning them is very very fun. Uh, Kangaskhan trying to use Sucker Punch, burning him also very nice, uh, and that also applies to Bishop and Hunchcrow. So that's why I like using Will O Wisp. I've also seen people. Um, use Tailwind on their banded Talonflame as well. So that is worth consideration too. It gets uh, will o -Wisp through TM and Tailwind through level up, I believe. So that is worth considering. I feel like uh, there's not a lot of Pokemon on my team to take advantage of the Tailwind. Zagard, Ferrothor, and Azumarill are already pretty slow. And we only have room for one more Pokemon on the team. Uh, Mega Mewtwo doesn't really care about the Tailwind because he's already so fast. So no reason to run Tailwind here. Now, just going to go max attack and max uh, speed. I I would love to outrun any other Talonflame that is up. Uh, and also, you just you really you see more bulky Talonflames now, which is okay by me. I'm going to Brave Bird them first most of the time, so I will definitely take that. Now, let's see. We have Mega Mewtwo X, Zigard, Ferrothorn, Azumarill. And Talon Flame. We got our Fire Water Grass Core. We have our two legendaries. Now we just need 
Let's see. Let's just go down the list. This will be... A, and you guys feel free to, I don't know, screen cap my list if you want. Or if you think of other counters that I may not have thought of when I post the video, let me know. Now, Mewtwo X or Y are both... Uh, if it's Mewtwo X, that's handled by Talonflame. Um, Mewtwo Y and regular Mewtwo are... I have a good amount of priority on my team here between these three Pokemon to revenge kill it. Uh, I could also go back and put Shadow Ball on my Mega Mewtwo... Uh, which I wouldn't outspeed Mega Mewtwo Y. Mega Mewtwo Y speed goes up considerably. It's kind of scary, actually. Um, but yeah, I feel like I can revenge kill it pretty easily between the priority on those three. Now, Evil Tall, uh, being a dark flying type, he can't do too much to Azumarill. Azumarill is just really, really bulky uh, for Evil Tall to hit. Uh, and of course, I resist its moves. And Zigard can basically set up on it because the Dark Moves will be doing less. And I don't know that Zigard cares too terribly much about um, uh, Sucker Punch. So I'm okay with that. Kangaskhan is still going to be a problem because I basically have to bring Ferrothorn. I can hit it with priority extreme speed. And I can also just burn it with Will O Wisp from my Talon Flame. Uh, uh, Sucker Punch, of course, won't kill Azumarill, so it'll be forced to go for the return, which will do about 75% to a full health Azumarill. And then, of course, since I'm not banded, I could hit it with a, a water... Uh, probably I'd go play rough and then Aqua Jet and hope that, that would be enough to take it down there. Uh, Xerneas running the Geomancy set. Uh, Ferrothorn basically laughs at it. I think a Focus Blast does around 70% to a Ferrothorn when it's not uh, boosted by Geomancy. And I keep mentioning Geomancy. Geomancy is like a double quiver dance. It raises, it takes a turn to charge, but if you have Power Herb, then it just happens immediately and you get plus two special attack, plus two speed, plus two special defense. So, uh, Lucario, if he's running the physical set, this team laughs at it. If he's running the special set, um, I have a little bit more trouble with that just because Vacuum Wave and um, Aura Sphere and Flash Cannon kind of hit everything here except for Talonflame, and of course he cannot one-hit KO Omega Mewtwo unless he uses Shadow Ball, which is incredibly um, rare for Lucario to use, so I'm not that worried about that. Blaziken, we have Talonflame, Gengar, uh, Parish Trap, mm, I haven't really thought about Gengar. How fast is Mega Gengar? Okay, let's try just Gengar, yeah. 130 base speed. Okay, so if we encounter a max speed Mega Gengar, it will outspeed my Mega Mewtwo. But it has to evolve on the first turn, and I have just enough speed to outspeed Darkrai, uh, because I expect to see those in some type of Uber tournament. And so I can outspeed Gengar at first, so I will outspeed and KO it at first with the Side Strike. So if I see Gengar, I know that I can outspeed it at first. Uh, Gengar normally carries Sludge Bomb, Shadow Ball, maybe Focus Blast and Protect, and if it's the Parish set, it'll have Substitute, um, Protect, uh, Parish Song, and maybe Shadow Ball or Sludge Bomb. Uh, the Parish set, I'm not as worried about, just because uh, if, he try if he goes for Parish Song and then tries to Protect, I have enough priority on my team that I can hit him before he puts up a sub, um, so Zagard won't be as useful in that regard, but these two can hit it hard enough, especially Bandit Talon Flame will be really for that. Let's see, Greninja can't really do much against Ferrothorn. Uh, I guess it could be a physical one, but then he's touching me, and we know what happens if you touch Fuzzy, and then you get dizzy. Oh man, I shouldn't name my Ferrothorn Fuzzy. He's not Fuzzy, though. Oh well. Um, Aegislash, I have Earthquake here for him. I have two Earthquake users, actually. Maybe I should change Earthquake on Mewtwo, because I have two Earthquake users. I didn't realize that. I'm running Shadow Ball over Earthquake then. Hmm. That let's let's do that because I don't need two Earthquake users. That's just unnecessary. Because if I run Shadow Ball, I can still hit the Aegislash. Slash. Uh, but now with Shadow Ball, that allows me to wait. Does Shadow Ball hit anything extra besides Aegislash? Slash? Uh, it does not. We need to find a better move for you, me too. <laughs> um, could use Ice Beam could use Flamethrower might actually be pretty nice here. 
just because my only other fire move is Flare Blitz coming from Talonflame. Uh, that's a physical move as well. Uh, hmm. Alternatively, I could run an odd move like Taunt just to shut down kind of opposing things trying to set up or do, do some more stuff. That would help me out a lot with Gengar. I just taunted him. It's like, what are you trying to perish? Strap me, fool. I'm going to taunt your son. Um, I'm going to slash Flamethrower into that set for right now. Uh, I know it looks weird to run uh, Mega Mewtwo X and then only have one physical move on him, but as we have seen from only putting a little bit into his attack, it just is, he, he's just such a great, a great Pokemon all the way around there. Uh, Alright, keep on moving down the list here. We have Dragonite, who is handled quite nicely by Azumarill, actually. Do be careful when you're facing Dragonite. Definitely break multi-scale without using a super effective move first. It is very likely that they will have weakness policy and Dragon Dance up as you break their multi-scale and get the weakness policy boost alongside plus one. Then you're then you're staring down a Pokemon that has plus two attack. Uh, I'm sorry, plus three attack, plus two special attack, and um, plus one speed. So you don't really want to put yourself in that position. Uh, for example, I would probably break the multi-scale with Azumarill's um, Play Rough or even Double Edge. Um, I'm not Play Rough. Waterfall or Double Edge. And then go for the Play Rough. Uh, let's see. Rotom Wash can't do anything against for Rothorn. Um, Garchomp is handled again by Azumarill. Zigard is also able to hit it with an Outrage because Garchomp cannot one-hit KO Zigard basically no matter what unless it's banded, which is incredibly uncommon. Uh, Caesar, I have several things on this team that Caesar can't handle. Um, between Talonflame, Azumarill, Ferrothorn, and Mega Mewtwo carrying a Flamethrower. Uh, Mega Gardevoir is one of those weird Pokemon that can run so many different sets. It's really hard to counter outright, so you kind of have to figure out what set it's running. Uh, I could put a Poison Jab on a Mewtwo if I really wanted to, but that just seems unnecessary with the amount of priority I have. Um... Tyranitar running Dragon Dance, again, has to deal with Mega Mewtwo, Earthquake here, Power Whip here, Water and Fairy Moose here, and U-Turn here. Not worried about Tyranitar. Scarf Diggersby uh, still loses to the priority because it's not going to one-hit KO Azumarill. If he locks himself in on Earthquake or Return, um, then I will still be able to outspeed him with the priority Brave Bird. Uh... Yeah, so not worried about Scarf Diggers to me. Mega Charizard Y. Yeah, uh, that that's kind of a problem. I can outspeed it though with two of my Pokemon here. Zagar can't really set up on Y, but he can hit it with an extreme speed to revenge kill it. Um, I, I feel okay with that. Charizard X is way easier to deal with just because it's weak to ground type moves. Uh, Zagar kind of poops on that. Mega Venusaur is going to be okay to deal with as long as I have Mega Mewtwo and Talonflame. Um, of course, you should not rely on Fire type and Ice type moves for a Venusaur just because of thick fat. Swag play: we have a Lumberry on my Azumarill, uh, and I have some other priority here to go ahead of it, just as long as I'm faster than the people using it, which normally I'm going to be able to. Uh, still a little bit annoying to deal with. Clef Key especially because it resists extreme speed, but that's okay because Zagar cannot be paralyzed, so Zagar can switch right on in and Clef Key, trying to Thunder Wave, and I may get, it may hit me with Swagger, but then it's a coin flip as to, okay, now I have plus two. So, that can turn into a good situation, hopefully. Politoed, I don't really care about Swiss Swimmers as long as they have for Rothorn. They might be running Hidden Power Fighting, but with that massive special offensive investment that I gave him to hit upwards of 300, he'll be able to take that and hit back with a Power Whip or Leech Seed and stall them. So, uh, Zapdos is going to be handled decently by Mega Mewtwo's Rock Slide. I do need to see how much that'll do, I guess. Let's see. Mega Mewtwo X. I only had, what, 64 attack on him. And naive nature. I just need. I'm just curious here. You guys are welcome to click on through there. <laughs> rock. No, not that kind of rock. That's like a bird. Rock slide. Alrighty. And then Zapdos. We want the defensive Zapdos, which is going to be the very 
annoying, bold, max defense set, max HP set. Yeah, I can still, I can 2-8 KO no matter what with, oh no, I can't 2-8 KO with Rock Slide. Okay, that is interesting. Um, oh no, I gave a 64 special attack. We want 64 physical attack. Still not a 2 KO. Maybe I should give it a little bit more, just to be sure that I to it that I'm able to 2 KO Zapdos. Uh, how much does Psy Strike do? Because Psy Strike hits your physical. Hmm. Yeah, that is even less. So let's give Mega Mewtwo just enough attack to KO Max. Um. Maximum defensive there. Almost. Oh man, he's gonna need a lot more attack investment. Good grief. Man, well, if we don't have Mega Mewtwo, because Mega Mewtwo can do about 40%, I could also hit it with. Uh, I don't have a lot of special attackers here. I have one mixed, and then this is physical, this is physical, this is physical, this is physical. Not a good setup there. Hmm. It would be nice to have some more special attackers. That's why I really liked having Rotom C. But then I don't have any steel types. Fooey. Alrighty then. Um, but that's why we have so many special moves on Mega Mewtwo. Hmm. I could run Ice Beam just so I could hit Zapdos. If I don't run Flamethrower, then I can still use Talon Flame. Ah, oh, man, and this is where the fun comes in in team building. Uh, I really didn't want to use all legendaries like I know most teams will be. Although I am just basically using three more OE Pokemon. I still want to have a, I want to have a decent win ratio. I just don't want to use all legendaries. Uh, I need a fun Pokemon on this team. That's what I need. Just throw a ditto on there. <laughs> uh, I am really tempted to put Ice Beam on Mega Mewtwo just so I can hit Zapdos. It will also allow me to hit Dragonite, Garchomp. Um, that's about it, actually. Hmm. I'll have to come back to that. I think in this last slot, I'm going to do a Scarf Ditto. And as you all know, Ditto has the ability Imposter, which allows it to immediately change into uh, the opposing Pokemon, as long as it's not behind a substitute and as long as it's not um, another Ditto. So, uh, or rather you can transform a Ditto, but then your Ditto will just have 5 PP for transform. So it's better to be slower than opposing Ditto where you can be, and otherwise you just want to have max HP. So we're going to do that, and then it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so Choice Scarf Ditto here. So, I'm going to tool around with this for right now, uh, just to click back through things here. We have Mega Mewtwo, Zagard. Ferrothorn, Zumeril, Talonflame, and Scarf Ditto. So this is the team I'm going to go with for now. I will be interested to see what you guys are deciding to run there. Uh, if you think I missed anyone on my list here, uh, definitely let me know, because I, I would suck if I didn't take something into account. And then I said, oh my gosh, it's on every team, what are we going to do? No, you won't have that reaction, I assure you. But, I... I'm looking forward to this tournament. I, I just think that these Pokemon can handle uh, these threats relatively well, even though I'm not running most of these threats. Like, I'm only running Mewtwo and Talonflame and Scarf Ditto. So, let me know what you guys are running. Let me know what you guys think the biggest threats will be. And let me know what you think of my team. In the meantime, I hope you'll have a great day. And, uh... Yeah, be sure to like the video. Then I can do more of these team analyses things where I'm building teams and letting you see the inner workings of my brain. Which, spoilers, it's all a lot of gray, squishy stuff. So, you know, just, you know, looking out. Alright, bye now.